So now that we've pushed up our changes for the published draft and scheduled states, we can go and deploy our code one more time to render. And once this is done, it will run the migrations as we added the DB migrate to our settings. And then this will go through and run the migrations, update our views and everything in production should have that new functionality. And actually, I just wanted to mention that this automatically deployed the code a few minutes ago when I pushed it up to GitHub. So Render automatically sets up a webhook so that when you push new code to that main branch, it will automatically deploy it for you. So on the website, we now have the uh, learning path blog on render.com and the published at timestamp there. And our existing blog posts are not published. Uh, so that is something that we need to make sure that we do. We're gonna go through and publish those. So I'm just gonna fill these out real quick and update our blog post. Oh, we need to make sure that we are logged in. Must have been a little stale. So we will log back in. And we see that now this is a draft blog post. We can edit that. We can set it to some time in the past. And once this saves, now we can go to our homepage and we'll see our blog post. If we go click on this and click edit, we can update that if we wanted to put it in draft mode, but let's go create a new draft post, blah, blah, blah. We'll create our blog post. And if we go back to the homepage, it is in draft mode. And if we open this up incognito where we're logged out, uh, we only see that post there. So that works great and we are all set. But you will notice this draft status is actually at the top. So this is one of the things that Postgres sorts nils either before or after and it kind of depends. So if you look at the PostgreSQL uh, sort nil or null, there is a way to tell it to sort nulls last. So if we use that, we can tell it to sort nulls last, but on our render database, it's sorting nulls first. Our draft post has a null value, and it is first even though we wanted it to be last, and it was last in our localhost Postgres database. So these are last here, but it's opposite in uh, here in production. So we're gonna want to adjust that by adding the nulls last to our order. So here we can look at this example. It says order by, and you give it your expression, like your column name that you want, and you say ascending or descending, and then optionally you can add nulls first or last into that. And uh, we just need to go modify our query. But if we try to do this, we're gonna run into a few issues. So for one, we could try changing this to a string that says nulls last, and we could use that instead of the descending uh, by itself. But if we do that in Rails, it's gonna say that is invalid. It needs to be just the word ascending or descending, um, either symbol or string and lowercase or uppercase. Those are your valid options. So unfortunately, it doesn't allow us to pass in nulls last. And the other option that we used to be able to do is we could use a SQL snippet and say published at descending, I would probably make this capitalized like we would in our SQL snippet. Um, and if we do that, it says dangerous query method. So what it's telling us is basically, Rails is trying to protect you from writing uh, unsafe SQL queries. So you can use ARel, which is an underlying tool that Active Record uh, provides to say, hey, this is a safe query that we can use. So we can say arel.sql and wrap that around our SQL snippet. And then if we refresh our page, everything works again. So that is one way to do that. Another that Rails 6.1 added uh, is this little ARel table access that you can use. So you can use this um, format to kind of generate the same thing. So what you would end up doing is you would say, uh, I think ARel table, square brackets published at descending, and nulls last. So you could have Rails generate the same ARel snippet using uh, pure Ruby there, if you would prefer. 
And if we refresh, same thing works. And if we look at our Rails logs, we will see that blog post load is select blog post from the blog post table, order by, published at, descending, nulls last. And then we'll sort by the update of that. And update of that will never be null, so we don't have to worry about sorting that one. Uh, just the published at can be null for draft posts. So those are two ways to accomplish this. I'm gonna use this ARL table version of it because that is uh, just a bit more Ruby-ish. But if you were familiar with SQL, the ARL.SQL wrapper around that will do the same thing. So this gets a little bit into the weeds and some of the complicated stuff that you might need to do with your Rails app to talk to your database with SQL. Um, and ARL is just something to know that it exists so you can go look it up when you run into weird little error messages like that from Rails that are trying to protect you from making uh, SQL injection issues and security problems in your uh, application. So that is all fixed. So let's go back to our terminal. We will add our nulls last, git commit, uh, sort published at with nulls last. We'll get push and this time uh, we know we can just wait for render to automatically deploy this uh, because we have the git push connected. You can see it right there, sort published at with nulls last, and it is working, so we can just wait for this to be deployed. So now that this is finished, we can go to our blog and check it out, and we'll see that the draft post is now last instead of first, and it matches our development environment. So we had to be explicit about that because the Postgres version that's running on render probably doesn't match the same version that I'm running locally on my development environment. And we can look at these things and see like uh, Postgres version, 15 and then our Postgres version for local is probably not the same or there's different defaults and you can look up the changes uh, between those versions of Postgres um, and learn, you know, what's the differences, why is it different and go figure out with Rails, how do I add something like null, false when I get an error and I tried to do it myself, Rails said, no, you can't do that, it's dangerous and we found that blog post that helps solve those problems. So that's gonna be a process you'll need to learn when you see an error, go Google it, see what other people are talking about on Stack Overflow or other blogs, and how to solve the problems will become one of the main skills you learn as a Rails developer, or developer in general, because you will often run into errors and need to figure out how and why that is happening. So our blog is fully functional, which is exciting, and it's been deployed to render, but I wanna take a little step into Rails a little bit deeper, and we're gonna replace the body text field for our blog post content. We're gonna use a feature from Rails called Action Text. And Action Text is a rich text editor which allows you to write things um, in here that are like bold, italic, links, you can do previews, you could do user mentions, you can do file uploads like embedding images and PDFs and other things. And this feature comes out of the box with Rails and it builds on top of another feature of Rails called Active Storage, which handles file uploading. So we're gonna do that in the next video and really take our blog to the next level by switching the body content to uh, to action text. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode.